everyone. We are Sharon and Jamie from Sharon as You Travel, and we are back with another cruise port guide. And this time we are heading to the great Northwest, and we are going to talk all about cruising from Seattle. When you think about cruising from Seattle, most people associate that with cruises that'll take you to Alaska. But Seattle may also be your embarkation port for cruises to Hawaii, Asia, and the Panama Canal, as well as many Pacific Coast itineraries. Today, we're going to cover getting to Seattle, local transportation options, where to stay in Seattle, and what to do pre or post cruise. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll be a pro when it comes to cruising from Seattle. The Port of Seattle, located in Elliott Bay, offers two separate cruise terminals, just a few miles from one another. First is Bell Street Cruise Terminal at Pier 66, which is adjacent to the downtown area, and this is where Norwegian Cruise Line and Oceana Cruise Lines will sail from. The next port is just a few miles northwest of downtown, and that is Smith Cove Cruise Terminal, Pier 91. That's where Carnival Princess Hall in America, Royal Caribbean, and Celebrity will sail from. Upon leaving Seattle, you can look forward to some beautiful views as your cruise ship sails from Elliott Bay into the Puget Sound and then meets up with the Strait of Juan de Fuca. I hope I'm saying that right. That's the body of water that connects the U.S. and Canada in that area. And then you're going to take a 96-mile journey to the mouth of the Pacific Ocean. And make sure to remember, there are two different terminals in Seattle. So don't end up getting dropped off at the wrong cruise terminal on cruise day. Getting to Seattle for your cruise will be a pretty simple process. You either live close enough to drive or you will find yourself flying into Seattle Tacoma International Airport, commonly referred to as SeaTac Airport. Getting a flight to Seattle should be a fairly easy process since SeaTac hosts almost every major airline you can think of. And don't overlook Alaska Airlines and Air Canada because they will often make stops in Seattle as well. The SeaTac Airport is about 14 miles or a 25 minute drive from downtown Seattle. But just like any major city, traffic can play a large part in your drive time. So if you're flying in the morning of the cruise, which we hope you're not doing, give yourself extra time to get from the airport to the cruise port. As far as getting from the airport to the Seattle area, you'll have a number of different local transportation methods you can use, starting with taxis or rideshare options like Uber or Lyft and they'll run you about $40 to $65 based on the time of day and the traffic. Your cruise line may have a shuttle option if you're flying in the day of the cruise, and you'll find other local shuttle options that'll make stops in the downtown area or your cruise port for $25 to $35 per person. If looking at shuttle options online, make sure to confirm pricing as well as the location the shuttle will stop at to ensure they'll drop you off at your hotel's front door. You can also use local bus service from the airport if you're up to that challenge, and one of the favorite methods of transportation and the cheapest is using the Link light rail system. You can actually find videos on YouTube detailing how to use the Link light rail. And for information on all the local transit options in Seattle, we recommend starting with the website visitseattle.org, where they will discuss all the different options with pricing info and website links for each unique method of travel. While we're on the subject of transportation, let's cover getting to and from the cruise terminals themselves. For those people that are driving themselves, there is some parking available at each of the cruise terminals. Pier 66 guests can park at the Bell Street Garage across from the terminal. This parking garage is covered and has a sky bridge connecting to the garage to the terminal. Pier 91 guests can park on site in the outdoor parking lot. And there are shuttles that will transport you to and from the parking lot to the terminal. For those traveling to Seattle and assuming you have spent the night before your cruise locally, you will have a few options for getting to the cruise port. Now first, there are a number of hotels that will offer a shuttle to the cruise port terminals, although they may not always be free shuttles. So make sure to do your hotel homework based on which terminal you will cruise from and where you want to stay in the city. Hotel front desk can always help to arrange a private car service. And of course, you can rely on taxis or ride shares to get where you need to go as well. If you don't already know, we almost always use Uber and it always seems to work out great for us. Both terminals will be easy to get to. At Pier 66, you can expect to be dropped off right in front of the terminal. But remember, you'll be in the downtown area, so you may experience a good amount of traffic. Pier 91 is a little bit off the beaten path and may be easier to get to. And here's a tip for Pier 91. Now there's a rideshare pickup lot almost a few hundred yards from the terminal entrance. And post-cruise, you'll have to walk to this lot to catch an Uber or Lyft. But 
When getting dropped off for your cruise, your driver might try to drop you off there as well. Now make sure to tell them to take you all the way into the terminal area to avoid the walk on embarkation morning. On our last cruise, we got dropped off at the terminal, but we heard others say that they were dropped at the rideshare lot, probably so the driver could get out faster, get to the next fare, and keep on making that money. Now, in addition to these methods, you can arrange cruise line shuttles post-cruise to the airport, and you may pre-arrange a private car or shuttle service as well for pickup. Taxis will also be readily available. On a side note, here is a little post-cruise transportation-oriented tip for you. Port of Seattle offers a luggage valet service for those that may have a late flight and you want to explore the city before going to the airport and you don't want to pack all that luggage around with you. The luggage service will deliver baggage to SeaTac Airport and offer guests airline boarding passes in advance of your airport arrival. Currently, this is a complimentary service. We heard from a number of people on our last group cruise from Seattle that they use this service and had a great experience with it. Again, the service is called Port Valet and you can learn more about it on your cruise or go online at portseattle.org. Now, before we move on, if you are new here and you have an upcoming cruise or just enjoy cruise content, please hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and if you're enjoying it, don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Also, make sure to check out our other cruise port guides for Miami, Port Canaveral, Long Beach, California, and Galveston. Now that we've covered getting to Seattle as well as the cruise terminals, let's talk about your pre-cruise stay in Seattle where to stay, what to see, and where to eat. Seattle is a destination city with so many things to see and do. Hopefully you can extend your vacation by spending a few days pre or post cruise and really see the Seattle area. We have cruised from Seattle a few times and really enjoy sightseeing and what the city has to offer. Now there are many great places to stay in downtown Seattle, close to sightseeing, bars and restaurants, we suggest deciding what you plan to see and do while in Seattle, and then choose a hotel location close to where you plan to hang out. If you're looking for suggestions, here are five hotels we'd recommend based on location, our previous stays, and feedback from friends that have stayed there. The first two hotels are just outside the downtown area, but still within walking distance of it, and they're great options if you're traveling as a family as they offer larger rooms and complimentary breakfast, and they are the Homewood Suites on Western and the Hampton Inn on Fifth Avenue. Both of these hotels were within walking distance to food, shopping, and sightseeing. Now, I loved the Homewood Suites because it was two blocks from a Safeway grocery store for all of our pre-cruise needs. Plus, attached to the backside of the hotel was an awesome spot called the Queen Anne Beer Hall. Oh, that was so good. It was a true German beer hall with great food and drinks, and we enjoyed a fantastic lunch there. Now, three other options we'd recommend are the Inn at the Market, which is located in the heart of Pike Place, and the Seattle Marriott and the Edgewater, both on Alaskan Way, right in the heart of the city, right on the water. All of these are great locations and we'll put the addresses to all the hotels in the description below. For many more options, check websites like hotels.com or even TripAdvisor for locations of hotels and reviews. But remember our hotel tip, find your hotel online and then book direct whenever you can. We mentioned sightseeing earlier. There are so many great things to see and do in Seattle. The main downtown area hosts a ton of places to go to, starting with the Seattle landmark, the Pike Place Market, where you can eat, drink, and shop until your heart's content. Plus, you can witness the world famous fish throwing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you... <laughs> I like that. I yeah, like that a lot. That right. was super cool. Um, and even visit the Starbucks, the first ever Starbucks location. Give yourself some extra time, though, for that grande latte because the line is going to be probably out the door and down the street. You can also spend the day at the Seattle Center. It's a combination park and arts and entertainment hub where you can climb all the way to the top of the Space Needle. And uh, remember guys, when you get to the top of the Space Needle, don't miss out on having a snack and a cocktail while you're enjoying the views. I, I feel like the, the cold drink makes the views even better. <laughs> and also, you have to visit the Chihuly Garden and Glass Exhibit. It is amazing, so beautiful and the Pacific Science Center. Also nearby, if you love music, is the Museum of Pop Culture, also known as the Experience Music Project. I think they recently changed the name of that, so I wanted to mention both names. And just down the street is the Climate Pledge Arena, formerly the Key Arena, where you can catch a Seattle Kraken hockey game or a concert, as well as other events. 
You can check out the Olympic Sculpture Park and then walk over to the Seattle Art Museum. You can check out the Amazon Spheres, the Museum of Flight. You can take tours that'll include the history of Seattle Underground, or maybe you just want to tour the harbor area and take in the beautiful views of the city. And let's not forget the place with the all-you-can-eat gum display. That's right, the Seattle <laughs> Gum Wall. Now, some call it fascinating. Some call it disgusting. I think we'll call it what a combination of both. Yeah. How's that sound? That's very interesting. That's right. Now, whether you have a specific <laughs> destination in mind or maybe you just want to walk the streets of this historic city, you'll have a great time sightseeing in Seattle. One friendly reminder, you might want to bring a poncho or rain jacket when you're walking around because Seattle is known for its very soggy weather. Finally, if you like great food and in particular seafood, then you will love Seattle. Yeah. There is an abundance of restaurants in the downtown Seattle area. That's right, Sharon. Starting with the Pike Place Market area. And for the record, make sure you say Pike Place <laughs> and not Pike's Place Market. You, you know, you might rub some of the locals wrong if you don't say it right. You can literally just walk the streets and stumble across great food and drink establishments, including the one mentioned earlier, the original Starbucks. Here are a few great options to try, including a few of our favorites. The first one, the Pink Door. It's an Italian restaurant with cabaret shows and trapeze entertainment with options for outdoor seating with beautiful views of Elliott Bay. Then there's Elliott's Oyster House. It's a very popular waterfront restaurant with a bay view known for their selection of seafood and their focus on sustainability. Next, the Crab Pot, a casual seafood restaurant specializing in seafood boils where the whole pot of food is just dumped right on your table for family style dining. This location did a great job handling our large group on our last group cruise in Seattle. Next, you can check out Anthony's Bell Street Diner located on the downtown Seattle waterfront in the same building as Anthony's Pier 66 and Anthony's Fish Bar. Sounds like Anthony's got a lot of action going on down there. <laughs> uh, the Bell Street Diner offers great seafood in a casual waterfront setting. Now, if seafood isn't your jam, but you want a fine dining experience, try the Capitol Grill. Just a few blocks from Pier 57 and the Seattle Great Wheel, you'll find what might be the best cuts of meat in all of Seattle. Now, if you follow our channel, you know we always look for a great pizza place just about everywhere we visit. So here are a couple of our favorites in Seattle. First, Serious Pie, a specialty gourmet pizza restaurant located in the Pike Place Market and another pizza place that we have eaten at every time we've visited Seattle and that is Zeke's Pizza. There's a number of locations in Seattle. We have visited the location on Dinny Way. They offer a nice selection of local beer, wine, and great pizza. Well, Sharon, I don't know how we do it, but we always seem to end things with good pizza talk. I guess that'll just about wrap things up for us and our Seattle Cruise Board Guide. Hopefully all this information will help you get started in planning your next cruise from Seattle. If you've cruised from Seattle before or visited the downtown area, please post some of your best tips of favorite places to eat and things to do in the comments below this video. The more information we all share, better chance we're gonna help out someone else's vacation and make it more memorable. And remember, when you're ready to book your next cruise, contact Sharon right here. She's awesome. Give her an email at Sharon at C at gmail.com. She can help you plan any cruise on any cruise line to any location. I usually have to say that because she doesn't like to self-promote. Like <laughs> and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell and share all the new content with family and friends. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.